In today's recap, we get to witness one of the most electric and entertaining walk-off home runs I've seen in quite some time. I know that's kind of spoiling the end of the game, but yeah, that happened. Spencer Torkelson, the number one pick from 2020, he has been struggling mightily to begin his career, but he's finally breaking out. He had two home runs yesterday, and speaking of two home run games, Bryce Harper, the two-timer, he ran into a few yesterday, and we saw one of the plays of the year down in Cincinnati. All of that in today's MLB Recap, a series in which we recap every single game, almost every single day, and a reminder, use code FUZZY on SeatGeek to save 20 bucks off baseball game tickets and concert tickets. All right, the first game from yesterday, the White Sox and the Cubs. The White Sox bullpen owes Mike Clevenger steak dinner for the rest of 2023. Like every single night, he should be eating really good. Gavin Sheets hit a moonshot to put Mike up three zip and Clevenger, he had his best start in years. Stuff and everything. He was pumping 98 to 99 on the fastball. I didn't even know that he could get it up that fast. He ended up with seven strikeouts over seven shutout. He only allowed three base hits the entire game. So why does his bullpen owe him dinner for life? Well, first off, they let Nick Madrigal hit a home run. The dude has four total home runs in 208 games. And yeah, like I said, stake for life. Morel, he walks it off. Easily one of the most electric walk-off home runs I've seen in quite some time. He just turned 24 years old. He has 30 home runs over his last 162 games. Have the Cubs found their new Javier Baez? I think so. If you've been watching these recaps daily, you would know that the Cubs are tied with the Reds in the NL wildcard. So Cubs fans are going to be Guardians fans for the next few days, and they need Cincinnati to take an L. Well, that's not a great start for Cubs fans. Rookie Matt McLean, he is so good. His first of two RBI extra base hits. Now, speaking of RBI extra base hits, there's Ramon Laureano hitting a home run off a lefty. Wait, Wait, TJ Friedel, he takes it back. What an amazing catch. TJ Friedel, he's hitting almost 290 with 10 home runs, 23 stolen bases, and three outs above average in the outfield. He's really good. That one you can't rob. Stuart Fairchild went 430 feet on that two-run blast. And McLean, he also tagged a two-run home run. His stats for a rookie don't make sense. In 79 games, he's hitting 298 with 23 doubles, 13 home runs, 11 stolen bases. And defensively, he has a 7 DRS that is 7 defensive run saves. He is a plus-plus defender at shortstop or second base. I'm going to be a fanboy real quick because Gabriel Arias is a 23-year-old middle infielder who just went 430 feet the other way. Like, I know, Cincinnati, they won easy 7-2, but I had to show that because Arias, I think that his ceiling is so much higher than Ahmed Rosario, and I'm so happy that Rosario was off the squad. Even though he's raking with the Dodgers, I'm happy. The Marlins came into this next game against the Astros, just one game ahead of the Cubs and the Reds for that final wild card spot. So like they can't lose this game. And uh, oh my, okay, wow. Bregman and Tucker, they went back to back. It blows my mind that Kyle Tucker is now hitting 340 against left-handed pitchers. Chaz McCormick, he deleted this baseball from existence 440 feet. He's up to 17 home runs now. He's been better than George Springer this year. He's kind of George Springer 2.0. Justin Verlander, he gave up a few runs in the first and it would have been more if Jeremy Pena didn't turn in that six spinning throw to end that inning. Pena, he then plated a run on an RBI single in the third, which gave Houston a big sixth run, and it was big because Justin Verlander was terrible again. He's given up seven earned runs in his first 11 innings back with the Astros, but luckily the Astros offense, they're all-time talented. They got every single run back. They erupted for six runs in the seventh inning. Altuve took a walk with the bases loaded. Bregman, he had a three RBI day after that two-run double, and the exact same thing for Kyle Tucker. Tucker is having one of the craziest offensive seasons I've ever seen. He's on pace for 32 home runs, 32 stolen bases, and almost 125 RBIs. We've talked talked about the Cubs, we've talked about the Reds, we've talked about the Marlins. All three of those teams are fighting for a wild card spot in the NL. But another team that we have to talk about, the Brewers, they're still fighting for first place in the NL Central. And if they lose it, they'll be fighting for a wild card spot. The Brewers, they got hosed by bad defense all night long. We'll get to that in a second. Shout out to Miguel Rojas. This dude was in danger of losing his job and he turned into a whole new player ever since they traded for Ahmed Rosario. He has three home runs and 11 RBIs over his last 11 starts. LA, they got a free run on a catcher's interference in the second inning and then on an error in the sixth. But before we show the error, I gotta show the GOAT, Clayton Kershaw. He went five strong innings. He's still trying to build up after coming off the IL. He allowed one run on just three base hits. He came out after 71 pitches. Kershaw has a 2.37 ERA since last year. So much for being washed. Stud defender Joey Weimer, I can't believe he misplayed that ball just entirely. One scored on that, and then LA, they ended up with seven on the night after a Will Smith RBI single, a Chris Taylor solo home run. The Dodgers, in their last 10 games, have not lost. They've won 10 in a row, and they have a plus 146 run differential. They're so good. The Tigers went down a ton before the second came
came to a close. The Twins, they were just raking in the first few innings, but not to fear, the future is here. Sorry, that's really cheesy. But no, I'm actually being dead serious. Riley Green and Spencer Torkelson, they combined for nearly 900 feet worth of home runs in the third inning. Green, he's hitting 310 on the season with 11 home runs. He missed a bunch of games, so he would have more home runs if he never got hurt. Torkelson, he's in the 20 home run club with that second deck shot. Make it a two home run day. Spencer Torkelson is up to 21 home runs, and this is amazing. A 103 OPS plus, and look at Kerry Carpenter go. Kerry Carpenter is a flat out stud. He has 16 home runs and a 137 OPS plus. That is one of the better young cores in baseball between Riley Green, Spencer Torkelson, and Kerry Carpenter. A scary ninth inning happened for the Tigers. Minnesota, they blasted off for two home runs. They made it a one run game, but Jason Foley, he was able to eventually get it done. The Tigers beat the Twins 8-7 to on a Kiel Badu's birthday. Christian Walker is seriously one of the most underrated players in baseball. He's got to be ranked in the top 50 after this year. 430 feet for his 27th home run, his first of two on the night. So sit tight, we'll show his second home run later on. That's because Arizona, they popped off for four clutch runs in the sixth inning. Brian Kennedy took a walk with the bases loaded and then Nick Ahmed cleared him on a triple. Arizona, their outfield is just so massive. I mean, it's not San Francisco massive, but they kind of have their own triples alley. So it's six to three Arizona, things are looking good. When the Rockies attack, like I'm talking Fire Nation from Avatar Attack. It's awesome to see Brendan Rodgers healthy and driving baseballs again. That's a two-run double. And that right there is a two-run home run. Nolan Jones, he took this game over for a few moments, not only with the stick, but check out this cannon of a throw in the seventh inning. According to Baseball Savant, Nolan Jones has the best arm in baseball. But remember how I said Walker had two home runs? He saves the snakes from the jaws of defeat. Christian Walker, he has 28 home runs. He has five home runs and 11 RBIs over his last five games. Paul Sewald, he shut it down in the ninth inning. The Diamondbacks, they're back to one game over 500. Another team in the NL West that is trying to play catch up, the Padres. They are trying to catch up to the Diamondbacks. The Padres, they're just three games back of the Diamondbacks in the NL wildcard standings. The Padres, they were taking on Baltimore again, and Tatis and Xander both did their jobs early in this one. Home runs are cool, but so is putting the ball in play. They both single in a run, and Cronenworth, he had a fun day. He added another RBI single to put the Padres up 3-1. to one. Blake Snell was dealing. He still had a quality start, but Ryan Mountcastle, he is just so strong. Regardless, Regardless, Blake Snell, again, a quality start. Six innings, only three base hits, five strikeouts. His 2.65 ERA is one of the best in baseball, if not the best. The Padres, they're going to extend their lead on a Grisham solo home run. And what was that? A steal of home by Fernando Tatis Jr. Baltimore relief pitcher Siono Perez, he unplugged his brain. He was just staring off into the stands. Tatis is still so electric. He's hitting 480 with five stolen bases over his last six games. The Diamondbacks and the Padres have both won two in a row. They're right back in it. I mean, it's crazy how the NL Wild Cards standings can just change overnight. It's got to be super frustrating to be a foreign speaker in America. So this is Josh Lowe, spelled L-O-W-E. He went yard. And this is Brandon Lau, also spelled L-O-W-E. Either way, both guys rake. Josh Lowe has 15 home runs and 24 stolen bases. And that was Brandon Lau's 100th career home run. That is the fewest plate appearances ever by a second baseman to 100 career home runs. Brandon Lau has all-time pop for a second baseman. I mean, again, that's MLB history. Luke Rayley, he then hit one of the craziest home runs I've seen in a while. StatCast projected a home run in 30 out of 30 ballparks, but it didn't even leave, even though it was 425 feet at 111 miles an hour. But it ended up still being a home run because Luke Rayleigh absolutely flies on the bases. He has 17 home runs and a 136 OPS plus. Aaron Savali, he was incredible. Five strikeouts over six shutout innings. He's going to pick up his first win as a member of the Rays. And speaking of first, Tampa Bay, they're back to being just two games back of Baltimore for first place in the AL East. Every single run in this next game game between the Red Sox and the Nationals scored via the home run ball. Now, real quick, I got to check out this sick web gem. Ildemaro Vargas, he's always been an elite defender. He showed off the leather one more time to end the first inning. All right, home run time. Chavis, he socked one against his former team. He morphed back into his former nickname, the Ice Horse. He was known as that back when he was with the Red Sox. Stone Garrett, he had his first of two. Yes, two home runs. As Mackenzie Gore, he was dicing up the Red Sox all day long. He held the Red Sox to one hit over six shutout, striking out seven on just 85 pitches. He is so, so talented. He got hosed by the Washington bullpen though because his W, it was taken away on a two-run blast from Pablo Lopez. But at least Washington is still going to get the W. Kybert Ruiz, he is so good. A three-run blast in the eighth inning. He's almost hitting 330 with six home runs over his last 30 games. He's a young switch hitting catcher. Just the defense has got to 
to get better. With a name like Stone Garrett, 445 feet should be expected. He's got 13 home runs and a near 130 OPS plus over his first 110 games. Why did the Diamondbacks DFA him? They just cut him and left him off their 40-man roster last year. The Jays and the Phillies, I don't know who's responsible for the demise of Aaron Nola, but I would like a talk and I don't like this at all. But good for Dalton Varshow. He has two home runs and seven RBIs over his last three games. Bryce Harper, he also has two home runs over his last three, but those two came in one game yesterday against the Blue Jays. His first was a no-doubter off of Kevin Gosman, and his second home run came later in the game, so stay tuned. Biggio, he brought home two more off of Nola, who has a 4.6 ERA in 2023, just terrible. But the Phillies offense is so deep, they can pop off at any time. Extra base machine Nick Castellanos, he had an RBI double, his 29th double, and no way that's how the Phillies took the lead. An error from third baseman Santiago Espinal allowed two to score, but a lot of Blue Jays fans were blaming Vladimir Guerrero Jr. for not scooping that. The box score says it was Espinal's fault, so I'm going to blame him. Philly, they grabbed a few more before Jake Cave and Bryce Harper blasted off. Harper now has four home runs in his last 10 games, and he's six away from 300 career home runs. He's going to walk into the Hall of Fame. Speaking of walking into the Hall of Fame, Shohei Otani could step away from the game of baseball, like still be a active player, but just not play while he pursues a career in pottery or something like that, and he would still walk into the Hall of Fame once he accrues 10 years of service time, 440 feet for his 42nd home run, and he has freakishly good genes. Look at that hair. He's got lettuce up there. Not a single sign of hair loss. Again, he is not human. Reed Detmers has been one of the worst starting pitchers in baseball over the last few, I, I would say, six or seven starts. He has a 10.3 ERA over his last six starts. Yeah, not good at all. But yesterday, he took all of the insults personally. He dialed it up versus the Rangers. The kid took a no-hitter into the eighth inning. Now, unfortunately, he did allow a base hit in the eighth, but he still ended up going seven and a third shutout with five punches. That is a six start. John Gray, he's going to get the tough L. He only allowed one. He also went seven innings, but the Rangers, they were shut out in this one. Matt Dice, he went 450 feet. My goodness. And then Carlos Estevez, he struck out two. He has 26 saves. I feel like his rough patch is officially over, but let me knock on wood. Staying with rough patches. My God, the Yankees. So the Angels can get within one game of the Yankees in the AL wildcard standings, and the Yankees are still facing off against the Braves. I mean, you guessed it. The Yankees, they got swept. They gave up a two-run tank job to Eddie Rosario, and that was the game. New York, they got blanked by Charlie Morton, like held scoreless, not cursing right there. But yeah, Morton, he was sick. He struck out 10 Yankees over six shutouts. Charlie Morton has not allowed a run in back-to-back -back start, so he has gone 11 straight innings without allowing a run. The Yankees, they have multiple free outs in their lineup right now, and as a team, they're hitting 231, which is second worst in all of baseball, just ahead of the A's. Rizal Iglesias, he has 23 saves. The Yankees are officially under 500 this late in the season for the first time since 1995. I wasn't even born yet the last time the Yankees were this bad. Ty France brought home J-Rod on a single in the first inning against the Royals, and Cal Raleigh, this guy seems to hit a home run every single recap now. He has 21 home runs on the season, which is crazy for a catcher, and he made some Mariners history. He is the second fastest Mariner ever to 50 career home runs. A-Rod, he was the only person that did it faster. He did it two games faster. J-Rod, he smoked an RBI single in the second, and after Casey made a nice effort to tie it at 4-4, J-Rod, he stepped up again. Okay, well, he stepped up after Teoscar grabbed the lead on a sack fly, but sack flies are kind of boring. They're underrated, but they're kind of boring. That's still a huge RBI single from J-Rod. He had four base hits. He stole two more bags, so he has 30 stolen bases on the season. He is one of seven players ever with 47 home runs and 55 stolen bases by the age of 22. Kind of random stats, but that's still pretty awesome. That's a huge run because Nelson Velasquez, he rakes. He made it a one-run game, but Matt Brash, he got the job done. The Mariners, they do win, and the Jays lose, so I think one game separates the Jays and the Mariners in the AL wildcard standings. So Oakland kind of decked St. Louis starting pitcher Matthew Libertor, and they did not hold back at all. They teed off for four runs in the first, and this Zach Geloff kid, he is literally a human cheat code. That's an RBI single in the fourth, and then later on the sixth, there's an RBI double. He had four base hits in this one. He's the first A's player in franchise history with 20 extra base hits and 20 runs in his first 28 games. That is absolutely mind-blowing. Paul Blackburn, he pitched out of his mind, by the way. He put the Cardinals in a blender. He went seven very efficient frames, did not allow a single run to score with eight strikeouts on just 86 pitches. Hello, that's amazing. Tyler Soderstrom, look at the pop in his bat. 460 feet. Tyler Soderstrom, Mason Miller, he's about to come back from injury, I think. A guy in the minors. I love Daryl Hernandez. I am not saying the A's are going to be World Series contenders by next season or even 2025, but in a few years when they're in a new stadium in Las Vegas, they could be nice. I still can't believe that DJ Stewart is getting regular playing time for the Mets, but he popped off again for a home run. He has back-to-back -back games with a moonshot. Francisco Lindor, he refuses to give up on the season. He's almost up to a five war already. He has 72 RBIs after that two-run single. Brian Reynolds, he stayed blistering hot. He's hitting 295 with nine home runs over his last 22 starts. Brandon Nimmo got one of those runs back on a
on a single, and DJ Stewart, he added to the lead. That's his second home run of the game. He has three home runs over the last 24 hours. Polar Bear Pete teed off as well. He has 36 home runs, and even Rafael Ortega drove in a run. The Mets, they went easy 8-3. to three. They're seven and a half games back in the wild card. Is there still hope? Let me know. So before we do today's Immaculate Grid, a quick update on the standings. The Rays are back to two games of the Orioles for first place. The Twins and the Guardians both lost, so nothing changed in the Central. The West, the Rangers lost, and the Astros won, so the Astros are just two and a half games back. And then we can see in the Central and the National League, the Cubs and the Reds are two and a half games back because the Brewers lost yesterday. So what does that mean for the wild card? The Mariners are one game back of the Jays because the Jays lost and the Mariners won. The Red Sox and the Yankees, they're kind of losing pace right now. In the National League wild card race, you have the Phillies and the Giants in it right now. The Cubs, the Marlins, and the Reds are all tied for that final wildcard spot, and the Diamondbacks and the Padres are both within five games. All right, today's Immaculate Grid. We have the Twins and the Phillies first. That one's easy because this dude is all over the place on social media. Trevor Pluth, I know he ended his career with the Phillies. The Braves and the Phillies. I, Braves and the Phillies, Braves. Absolutely no one is coming to my head right now. A Phillies all-star. Um, Ryan Howard, Chase Utley, Shane Victorino was a good one. What about their catcher from that... Um, uh, Carlos, I know for a fact, Carlos Ruiz was once upon a time an all-star. 1% look at me go, the Mariners and the Twins. The Mariners and the Twins. Um, Michael Pineda, I know Michael Pineda was on both teams. 4%, yo, this is actually looking like my best grid ever. The Braves and the Mariners. Braves and the Mariners. Adam Lind, I feel like Adam Lind maybe was on both of these teams, maybe not. Um, what was that, Brett Boone? Was Brett Boone ever, I don't know if Brett Boone was ever on the Braves also. Who was on the Phillies? And I mean, this is a tough one. I'm going to say, I think Edwin Diaz might be this guy, but I'm not going to waste my pick just yet. Uh, Twins, MVP. I know Rod Carew for sure won an MVP. Yeah, okay, 12%. That's my worst one. An MVP for the Braves off the bat. You could go Hammer and Hank, but I'm not going to do that. This dude, sh should he be in the Hall of Fame? Dale Murphy, I think he won two of them. 12% as well. An MVP and All-Star. Um, I talked about this guy earlier today on Twitter. He's putting up crazy stats. Corey Seager has basically been prime modern day Josh Hamilton. Yes, 0.8%. That was huge, right? Three guesses left. This has been one of my better ones. An all-star, I'm going to go Edwin. I'm almost positive because he had a crazy season before he got traded. Edwin Diaz, 1% look at me go. The Braves and the Mariners. Braves and the Mariners. I'm going to go, um, I'm going to go Brett Boone, the brother of Aaron Boone. Because I'm pretty sure, wait, how do you spell Brett Boone? Is it one? Brett Boone? 9%. Oh, this could be my best Immaculate Grid ever. I just have to think of a Brave and a Philly. Um, Michael Bourne. Was Michael Bourne ever on the Phillies? I can't remember. Who was on the Phillies? Was, uh, oh, man, Abraham Almonte. I don't know, because he was on the Guardians, and then I think he went to the Braves. Was he on the Phillies? I'm going to go Abraham. Oh, no. I don't know about this one. Almonte. Abraham Almonte. No! Honestly, that was a little bit tough. Look at all these names. I've heard of Dale Murphy, but I already used them, so I can't. Maybe Gary Matthews, Michael Bourne. I forgot that Michael Bourne was on the Phillies for a little bit. You know, there's no shame in missing the Phillies and the Braves because, honestly, I don't really know any of these. Oh, Kenny Lofton. I should have gone Kenny Lofton. That does it for today's MLB recap. Thank you all so much for watching. I really appreciate all the support. If you enjoyed, leave a like if you're brand new. Hit that subscribe button. A reminder to use code FUZZY on SeatGeek to save 20 bucks off, and I'll catch you in the next one.